I'm Sarah Lacey and welcome to TechCrunch TV. My guest today is Craig Donato, who is the CEO and founder of Oodle, which powers uh, basically marketplaces for Facebook and MySpace. Craig, thanks for joining us. Um, sure. Now, you guys had some news last week. You acquired Grouply, and this week, Excel, who also funded Facebook, uh, funded a company called Yard Seller that is described as the eBay for Facebook without the auctions, which sounds a lot like Oodle. So a lot of news swirling around your space. What is what is your take on that? First, let's talk about the competition first. Well, I think in general, when you look at classifieds, um, it's a category that that uh, will be impacted in a very positive way with social. So. Um, if you you know when we step even stepping back a bit when we look at shopping and social commerce there's a lot of activity and buzz around social shopping which is helping your friends figure out what you should buy um, but what we're focused on and, and and other companies are I think are starting to take notice of is this idea of categories where who you're buying from matters as much as what you're buying mm -hmm. which we call social marketplace and you know in classifieds which is interesting you know when I buy something on eBay I just need to know enough about the person that I believe they'll ship it to me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff that we do, you're going to meet the other person, right? It's you're going to have a social interaction. So, um, social has a has a huge impact in terms of creating a very differentiated and unique experience. There's lots of lots of value that you can create out of integrating social. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I think there's going to be a lot of activity in the category. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that I know you've been working on for what ten years. I've you know been having conversations with people for years and years. I mean. Why isn't this taken off in a bigger way yet? It makes so much sense that people on Facebook who already know each other, who are connected, who are seeing different needs and desires in their feed all day long, I mean, it makes total sense this would be exploding on Facebook, and yet most people I know haven't bought or sold things on Facebook. Why is it taking so long? Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, I think that there's the issue, first off, that um, this is a, a local habit, right? So. Um, you got to have critical mass. Like you can have the best functionality in the world, but the end of the day is, do you have a critical mass of buyers and sellers mm -hmm. all interacting at the same time? And as a result, local marketplaces where you've got this chicken and egg game take a long time to unfold. And um, that's just the way they are. I mean, this is the case. It took Craigslist a long time to unfold. And you know, in the Valley, it very much has ADD. They want things to happen instantly, but local markets, again, take a long time to reach scale. And we've made you know, a significant amount of progress, goodness, in, in the last year on Facebook Marketplace and went from about 100,000 users to 7 million, which is, which is great. Wow. Um, I would also say that, that classifieds and commerce are social, but they're not necessarily viral. So as a result, you know, some of the things that's happening with um, gaming, those sorts of, of, of mechanics aren't as easily applied in, in the world that we live in. So I think they, they tend to, to, to grow on a more linear versus an exponential basis. Mm -hmm. So I know Reed Hoffman is one of your investors, and Reed and I have talked a lot about how early he was with LinkedIn and how uh, sites like MySpace and Facebook kind of came out of nowhere and st stole all this social media thunder while LinkedIn just kind of continues to grow and, and yeah. add more professional networks. I feel like you guys have been a little bit the same when it comes to social shopping. You know, you were so early on this trend and then, you know, companies like Groupon have come out of nowhere. Companies, you know, that are sort of not really doing the same thing as you but kind of tangentially in the category. Do you feel like Oodle gets enough attention? Do you feel like you guys get overlooked? Uh, I definitely don't feel we get enough attention. Uh, we need are more you... attention. Thank you for this interview. <laughs> My uh, sub question is, are you mad you couldn't name the site Craigslist? Because that was already there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. Um, well, you know, I think, like, I think this is a kind of a little bit of a, because it takes a while. Again, you know, there's been a lot of startups that have entered our category over the last five years. And, you know, as I said, you can have the best features in the world, but there is this thing that just, you just have to take some time to develop a critical mass of liquidity in terms of bringing local buyers and local sellers together, and that just takes time. And, um, you know, I think we're obviously, you know, very, you know, uh, constantly looking out at what competitors are doing, but, um, you know, it's a tricky category that requires scale. Um, I do agree that we've been, we were early, um, and I think it's still early. You know, one of the big things we learned over Marketplace over the first year um, when we launched it was that social networks really aren't ideal for the type of commerce that we do, which is trading between people. So um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with friends. Um, 
and friends is kind of cool but there's not necessarily enough liquidity just trading with friends there's just not enough going on what we've really discovered is that the sweet spot for social commerce as it relates to the type of stuff that it does is really two to three degrees of separation and that's a lot of the function that we've been rolling out is figuring out how to expand that circle give it a little bit more elbow room so you know we're doing things now like friends of friends and letting you see how you're connected to people in ways like um someone that went to the same college you did and lives in your same town mm-hmm. and that was a lot of the motivation of the grouply acquisition so um you know the social graph is is pretty young right and on facebook it's just about friends um and clearly we're doing a lot to to as i just mentioned to make it about be about friends of friends and things like that but there's tons of trading that exists with social groups like moms groups or people that are really interested in a biking mm-hmm. and we're really trying to take a lot of the concepts that we've developed and started to, to actually apply it more broadly even on even on social activity that's occurring off of Facebook. Mhm. What 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 was the competitive landscape like between Ning and Grouply? Um how did you look at that deal and think Grouply was, you know, the one to sort of fill that need that you're describing? Cuz I mean, do your own social networks, group stuff, another really competitive space. Yeah, you know, I don't think you know, we really have looked at at Grouply as a platform and and what it could do and the technology that it had to both um almost sit on top of groups and to enable people to use Grouply across multiple groups at the same time. I mean, I I think it's very interesting technology that will let us figure out how we can introduce social affinity into the world of the, our mar- of our marketplace. So, there's clearly stuff we're going to be doing with Grouply groups, but um there's also a lot of that technology that can be brought into the marketplace. So, I uh, what, what you'll see with what what we're going to be doing with Grouply will happen in in Q1. There's a lot of work going on right now to take advantage of what they built. Mhm. So anything that you've seen just out of the sort of explosion in social commerce over the last year or so that's made you really th- you know rethink features you should add to your business or is it just a function of time like you were saying in this chicken and egg? Well, I do think again if breaking up social commerce into two pieces, the stuff that's been quickest out of the gate is the social shopping, mm-hmm. right? Which is, you know, if I'm looking to figure out what camera to buy, of course I'm going to solicit my friends for opinion on what to buy. And I think that's that that is happening very quickly and there's broad adoption on that trend. Uh the types of stuff that we're doing again more of the peer to peer trading or a, you know I'm looking for an apartment community or an apartment I want to know about the community it's 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 the local stuff mm-hmm. that will take a little longer to unfold because I think the social graph isn't ideal for that right now and 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 there's a lot of work underway it will be huge you know at, at the end of the day it's almost irrational for me to invite some anonymous person over to my house to test drive my car. You know, in the world when the, while the internet's a social medium, that doesn't even make sense, right? <laughs> Or if I want to get rid of rid of tickets to a concert, I I'd, I'd so much rather give them to a friend yeah. than to sell them to the highest bidder. And that's just, you know, I'm not going to email all my friends and say, "I've got tickets to a concert." They they they'd stop, you know. That yeah. that wouldn't work. But there's got to be ways to make this all work. And and social's just perfect for that. This is such a hard market and we're talking about how long it's taken and you know why even mighty Facebook and your 500 friends aren't a big enough market to really be an efficient marketplace of selling and trading stuff. I mean, we're talking about all the challenges of this market. Why are you in this market? Why are you still trying to build this company? What is it that you love about it that makes up for all of these challenges? Yeah, I think I think it's deep-seated father issues really. <laughs> uh, but 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 seriously, you know, I look at this opportunity and it, it's a gigantic market, right? So it's um you know, you it it kind of encompasses a lot of the activity that's on Craigslist, um as well as a lot of the activity that's on eBay. And and it's really wide open. You, you just for whatever reason, um there there's just a lot of white space in the category. You don't see Google I think it's because it's so up. hard to build the business. I mean, right, well, hard is good. Right? As a startup, yeah. right? I want something that's hard and where there's there's just just a lot of white space to create huge value. I mean, there's definitely an opportunity to create a multi-billion dollar category in this space. It is going to be hard and it is going to take a long time. So we've got, you know, got great investors. We, you know, we're we're doing, you know, we're just we have to be patient. And um, you know, at the end of the day, I absolutely believe that these long-term trends will happen and I just need to make sure that Oodle is patient enough to participate in them when they pop. Mm-hmm. And um you know, we just continue to make slow and trendy traction. We're like the, you know, it's very blue collar work ethic for for a Silicon Valley company. <laughs> and how are you guys doing on financing? Do you need more money? Do you have enough money? Are you minting money? I wouldn't say we're minting money, but we're doing great. We definitely do not need to raise any more money. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Craig, and we will let very you get welcome. to your Thanksgiving feast preparations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>